Good morning, everybody. I'm Pete Najarian, and once again, this is The Take on a Hump Day, favorite day of the week. We are here. It's Wednesday, and the first couple of days of the week, pretty interesting, actually, because of the pressure that was put on the market each day and the opening of those markets, really, really just basically giving you an insight into the day itself. Yesterday, a little bit different than it's been, and I'll tell you why. So, we opened down and we're down significantly to the downside. And we were looking in the S&P's down, the Dow Industrials are down, but the NASDAQ itself was actually, again, trading in a, in a not in lockstep. And it was trading on its own and it was much stronger. But the problem was we started to see the cascade of the NASDAQ following and then accelerating throughout the day. And that acceleration actually put the NASDAQ down significantly more even than the S&P and the Dow itself. So the pressure really coming from uh, the NASDAQ, the names that were in the green early certainly moved into the red very rapidly. And those names, Netflix, Amazon, Activision, AMD, you know the names. It's a It's been a fairly narrow group that has been leading the markets to the upside coming from technology and coming from the semiconductor industry and sprinkle in a little bit of biotech. That's really been what's powering the markets when we've had the upside moves. And, and certainly yesterday, that huge flip that we'd seen where we're looking at the NASDAQ and it really outperformed to the downside yesterday and was pushing very, very hard on the markets. Obviously, volatility started to move back into the markets themselves. You get up towards a 45 and then all of a sudden you'd maybe start to push on 48, 3% move. Well, we are getting significant moves on a regular basis. There's no doubt about that. The volumes, again, have returned. They they, they left us for the first couple of weeks of of April, and now we're starting to see those volumes really start to be a huge player into this as well. As a matter of fact, yesterday, we're about 2 million over the average, about a half million over uh, the year-to-date average. So pretty strong day yesterday in terms of the volumes being supportive of those moves. So that's something that really stood out. Obviously, oil has been volatile beyond words. And the fact that we watched that May contract go negative and all of what's been going on in oil, that really has been a huge aspect of what we've been watching very closely, clearly, over the last couple of days. Now, you talk about the Dow going down. Let's see what was pulling on the Dow. Well, uh, Boeing, Merck, Intel, Cisco, AMD. <laughs> I mean, you start looking at some of these names. Caterpillar, Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, Apple. Holy smokes. Then sprinkle in a couple others in, on the tech side that were moving, moving to the downside. You pretty much, you named almost every stock in the Dow moving to the downside. Very few that even were close to the green. Walmart, I think, was one of those names that, that was trading a little bit better. But today, seeing a much different market. As a matter of fact, in the pre-market, up a couple of hundred points. And then as oil started to sprint to the upside, we started to see the markets themselves really catch up and catch a nice little bit of a rhythm and get up there towards up over 400 points. So we've been wavering around all morning as we got the, late in the pre-market and then into the actual market. It's wavering around this up about 400 points on the Dow. So up uh, not quite 2%, call it 1.8% on the Dow. The S&P up about 1.8%. NASDAQ, again, outperforming again to the upside, well over 2% to the upside on that move from the NASDAQ, about two and a quarter percent. Now, what is really leading the NASDAQ? Well, it's, it's sort of the same old, same old guys. Intel, Microsoft, throw in a bunch more in terms of the chip space, the semiconductors. You got NXPI, NVIDIA, Micron, AMD. Now, Micron's been a little bit of a lagger, but Micron's starting to participate a little bit. Skyworks, another one of these names, talking about a, a, a big factor when it comes to Apple, but Amazon. When you look at these names and all of those names that I just mentioned that are in the NASDAQ, up over 4%. 4% or significantly more, you get the idea. A big move to the upside. Now, we have a lot of going on right now. We talk about oil and this big move. It's up 19% somewhere in that ballpark, couple of dollars. Energy's been powering a little bit. And, and when you look at the XLE this morning, up almost 4%, somewhere between 35 and 4%. You've got gold that's been moving to the upside as well. We've had gold and different aspects of the gold markets. We had GLD, we've had some GDX, we've had individual mining names. Yesterday we had GOLD was one of the names that actually hit. And when we look at gold today, up about two and a quarter percent, moving to the upside, pretty nice, big, powerful move. There's names that we've talked about in the past. GFI, Goldfields, was in the $5 range. Now it's actually up and over $7. So 
nice moves coming in across the board in different commodities. Now, the volatility obviously is pulling back a little bit, which it normally does and it is right now, holding right around this 43, so down a little bit, 43, 44, somewhere in that sort of a, a ballpark. Now, I talked about the NASDAQ. We talked about a lot of what's really been powering the NASDAQ, and you look specifically towards that semiconductors. So I always like to give you some unusual activity. So here's what I'm going to give you for today. So earlier in the week, I was on Fast Mon or excuse me, on the Halftime Report with Scott Wapner. I was on there Monday. I'm going to be on again this afternoon. But on Monday, we had a couple of unusual option activities. But we also had time which is something significantly different than what we're seeing in today's unusual options. So far today, of the unusual options that we're seeing, almost every trade expires either Friday or the following Friday, which is May 1st. So it gives you some sense of just how short-term people really are trading these markets. Now, I, I mentioned this because the names that I mentioned on Monday on, on the halftime report for unusual option activity – they actually went out to June and August. I'm talking about Intel and Marvell. So those are buying a little bit more time. And as a matter of fact, they've basically rallied. They got pushed down with the markets. They've rallied back pretty nicely and are now basically right back to where they were when we talked about that unusual option activity on Monday. By the way, when we'd seen that activity in those two names, market was down multiple hundreds of points at the time, three, 400 points. So yes, that is something that stands out and sticking with that sort of an area. NVIDIA. Now, this one, they didn't go out to June. They did not go out to August. This one, NVIDIA, they're going for Friday and they're buying the Friday expiring 290s. There's a lot of premium in these folks. When you consider the fact that today is Wednesday hump day and these expire on Friday, stocks trading around 283, NVIDIA's had a nice move to the upside along with so many other names in the industry, but a nice move to the upside and the fact that they're looking for even more at a very accelerated pace to get up and over that 290 level. It's pretty interesting. So buyer of about 3,700 of these, they're paying about two and a half dollars all the way up to almost four and a half dollars. It's eased back a little bit from that from those higher prices because as that buying came in, the stock started to move. Obviously, some of the hedgers from those folks that are selling probably moving the stock, moving the stock to the upside. Those those numbers were starting to move as people were starting to chase those numbers. And then sometimes you've got to have a little bit of patience and wait and see if you actually get a pullback. If you're interested in looking at a name like this, that's what I oftentimes do. If it's already moving and it's moved significantly from where they first started buying, I don't like to chase. I'll just look for the next one. Then there's always a, another bus coming down the road. So sometimes you get into these trades, sometimes you don't. But I, I, I just wanted to highlight this, not for anybody to make any action, because obviously you have to fully understand what all those risks are. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that we are seeing more and more and more in the semiconductor industry that's been positive. Texas Instruments yesterday, huge call buying there, stock up significantly today. So Nice to see some of these that are actually starting to progress and move to the upside. And we're seeing consistently buyers, buyers, buyers. And much of it is very short term. But we're seeing a little extension to the outs, to the longer side of things as well. Folks, I hope you have a great day of trading. This is The Take. My guys over at the Minnesotan, Corey and the gang, they'll take care of you. If you want any of their shirts, hats, any of this kind of stuff, they got The Take. They got The Giddy Up. They got The Bulls. They've got it all. I'll tell you what. Great people. And they're giving a nice chunk to Twin Cities Lime Foundation, a foundation that my wife started. I, I sit on the board of it, and it's trying to help people out. As a matter of fact, circumstances like we're all uh, seeing right now with COVID, so much of this really affecting a lot of the folks in the Lyme world because of the fact that they're compromised with the immune systems and so forth. So meaningful to us, for sure. And, and I appreciate Corey giving a piece of what he's doing towards the Twin Cities Lime. That's fantastic. Love you guys over at the Minnesotans. Great place. Theminnesotan.com. Check it out. Guys, have a great day of trading. It's going to be interesting, and I'll see you at noon.